Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to General Chemistry TST0914 of Tamhidi Center, USIM. And I am your Madam Ruby. Uh, today, we are going to start Chapter 2, entitled States of Matter, by beginning Lesson 8. We are going to define Gass's Law. The Gass's Law are Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Avogadro's Law. We are also going to derive the combined gas law. Apart from that, we are going to sketch and interpret the graphs of Boyle's and Charles' Law. Also, we are going to perform calculation involving Gass's Laws. In chapter Al-Mu'minun of the Al-Quran, Allah said, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً بِقَدَرٍ فَأَسْكَنَّاهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِنَّا عَلَى ذَهَابٍ بِهِ لَقَادِرُونَ And we have sent down rain, from the sky in a measured amount and settled it in earth and indeed we are able to take it away. In Mother Earth, water evaporates from ocean and sea. They will start in the sky and then they undergo condensation and then water came down to earth in the form of rain, liquid. It also comes to the top of the mountain and to the north and south pole to be stored as ice and snow in the form of solid. Without water, that would be the end of the world. In chapter Al-Fatir of the Al-Quran, also Allah speaks of how rain is coming down from the sky. In verse 27, do you not see that Allah sent down the rain from the sky and we produce thereby fruits of varying colours? And the mountains are tracks, white and red, of varying shades, and some extremely black. The sentence shows that there are so many colours, and that represents variety of elements on the surface of earth in the form of solid. That is how great the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, let's look at the changes of the states of matter and their processes. Solid will be melted to become liquid and liquid can undergo boiling and vaporizing, vaporization to become gas. Gas will be condensed to form liquid and liquid will be freezed to become solid. Solid can be sublimed to directly becoming gas and vice versa. Some physical characteristics of gases that we should know is that gases assume the volume and the shape of the containers. Gases are the most compressible state of matter. We can compress gas. Gases will mix evenly and completely when confined to a same container. And gases have much lower densities than liquids and solids. 
Before we begin learning about gas law, we should be able to understand what is pressure. It's force divided by area. But what is atmospheric pressure? At sea level, in a standard atmosphere, the weight of the atmosphere supports a column of mercury. The mercury is 760 millimeter high. Therefore, we can say that the atmospheric pressure is 760 tor or 180 m. So the units of pressure are shown here. 1 pascal is equals to 1 newton per meter square. 180 m is equals to 700 and 60 millimeter hygerium or 760 tor. And if you want to convert ATM to Pascal, this is the factor 101,335. The atmospheric pressure can be measured using a barometer. This is how barometer looks like. H represents the mercury, hygerium, because the standard atmospheric pressure supports a column of mercury about 760 millimeters high. So 760 millimeter hygerium is known as 180 m. If we want to talk about barometer, we want to talk about manometer. Manometer is a U-shaped tube containing mercury. It's a device to measure pressure relative to atmospheric pressure. Shown here is the schematic diagram of a manometer. And we are going to use this formula to find the pressure of gas relative to the pressure given by the mercury and the atmospheric pressure. Okay, let's do a question on manometer. In the lab, barometer gives reading of atmospheric pressure 764.7 tor. Okay. And then we set up a manometer and the height of the mercury in the open-ended arm. Okay, this is the open-ended arm. 103.8 millimeters. And the height in the arm that is contact with the gas is 136.4. So we want to know the height, H2. 136.4 minus 103.8. Okay. We can see that the pressure of the gas is less than the pressure of atmospheric. So, we know that from the formula, pressure of gas plus the height H2 equals to pressure of Atmosphere, so 764.7 minus H2, you got 732.1 tor, and you divide it by 760 tor to get 0 0.9634 atm. This is the final answer. Let's move to gas laws. Gas laws are experimental relationship among pressure, volume, temperature, and more. So the gas laws are Boyle's law, V with P, volume with pressure, Charles law, volume with temperature, Avogadro's law, volume with N, and ideal gas law involves all four factors. So all the gases behave similarly and we will learn what is the meaning of ideal gas law or ideal gas behavior. Let's look at Mr. Boyle here. 
he contributed a lot by developing a key piece of apparatus, the vacuum pump, which makes the study on gas progressed tremendously. He found that for a fixed amount of gas at a constant temperature, the gas pressure is inversely proportional to its volume. When the number of mole and the temperature are fixed, pressure is inversely proportional to its volume. So we can say PV equals to a constant value, therefore P1V1 equals to P2V2. These two containers have the same number of molecules. On the left, the pressure is lower. When the pressure increased, the volume would be smaller, the molecule will hit the walls more, hence making the pressure higher. In the process of making a formula that we can use, by trying to find K1, it became P1V1 equals to P2V2. Let's look at the graphs for Ball's Law. If we plot a pressure against volume, we're going to get a hyperbola curve. So if we plot pressure against 1 over volume, it's going to have a straight line with a positive gradient. Plotting PV against V and PV against P is going to give us a constant value. Let's do example 2.1 in your page 52. A sample of chlorine gas occupies a volume of 946 milliliters at a pressure of 726 millimeter hygerium. What is the pressure of the gas if the volume is reduced at constant temperature of 154 milliliters? This is the formula that we are going to use. And the information given in the question will lead us to find P2. The formula is transformed into P2 equals to P1 multiply V1 over V2. And we are going to insert the 726 millimeter hygerium as P1, 946 milliliters as V1 and divided it with V2, 154 milliliters. Press your calculator now and you're going to get, ta-da, 4,460 millimeter hygerium. Try convert the unit into ATM.